So in Civ 6, there's a Civ called Nubia. Pretty appropriate name considering it's the most noob friendly Civ. They have better early game archers and they crank them out at a faster rate and they get more combat experience. The Civ does not come with the base game, nor does it come with the two additional expansion packs. No, you gotta pay even more to unlock arguably the easiest and most overpowered Civ in the game. I installed a few mods and the only ones that have an impact on gameplay are catastrophic disaster intensity, which makes disasters happen way more frequently. I thought it would spice up the game a bit and detailed worlds is the most subscribed mod it basically buffs map generation in a bunch of different ways including desert tiles being more compact and rainforests more frequent in certain areas i don't believe either of these give me a real advantage though i may be able to react to disasters better than the ai can we're going to be playing against 3d ai on the smallest map disaster intensity will be five with six city states everything will remain standard except victory conditions will be domination the winner will have to conquer every Every other sieve so we got a pretty nice start we got five floodplains tiles and since we have disasters ramped up to five floods are going to happen a lot more often it will make maintaining improvements along the river harder but each time a flood does come it can fertilize tiles permanently increasing their yield and it looks like we're next to some kind of wonder as each of these desert tiles gives plus two faith we're going to start off with a slinger as with our sieve bonus we build slingers quicker than scouts and that tribal village gave us one builder unit that's insane and since we were the first to meet bologna we get to send them an envoy for free this gives us plus two signs per turn which is actually insane if delicate arch has any significance it lies i will venture in the power of the odd and unexpected to startle the senses and surprise the mind out of their roots of habit. It's a freaking arch in the middle of the desert. I don't think it really has any significance. One tile impassable natural wonder provides two faith and one gold to adjacent tiles. Hey, I'll take it. This would actually make for a really good Petra city as well, depending on how much desert there is down here. This is not going to make for a great Petra city because a lot of these tiles aren't even on the desert. But like this sheep tile, for example, is really good. Three food, one production, one gold, and two faith. We lost three population off of this flood. No freaking way. Way. We got five fertilized tiles though, and it actually completely destroyed the farm we built, but it added an extra food to that tile, so I'm not complaining. All right, so we got archery, and we upgraded both of our slingers to Pitati archers. I was getting ready to attack Sweden, and they provoked us, so I believe we can declare war against them without any penalty. The only issue is if we take Uppsala, it's kind of far away from Moreau, and we might not be able to put enough loyalty into it, so it might revolt. We now have a Goge, plus 50% production towards ancient and classical era melee, anti-cavalry, and range units, and we can start putting out Pitati archers every three three turns and we've actually been working this desert hill tile and it's been giving us two faith so we're able to choose a pantheon we don't really have anything that we need too much if we go for lady of the reeds and marshes we get plus one production from marsh oasis and desert floodplains and we have two desert floodplains so that would be plus two production oh man sweden has a swordsman our batati archers actually do a good amount of damage to him though we took him out i think we get ups all of this turn Yeah, this warrior should definitely be able to take it out. The town is under attack. And the question is, will it rebel? It will rebel in 19 turns, but we did pick up Victor, the Castellan. If we send him to Uppsala, we'll be gaining 5 loyalty per turn, so it will not rebel. We can also promote Victor. Your other cities within 9 tiles gain 4 loyalty per turn towards your Civ. And units defending within the city's territory get 5 combat strength. Both these are actually going to be really helpful. They have a settler right here. I wonder if we can capture it. I don't think so. I think it turns it into a worker. No, we actually get their settler. Whoa. And this cherry almost killed this archer. Got out with two health. I would say that's because of Victor's promotion, but he's not even in our territory, so he didn't have an extra five combat strength. And it looks like we found Stockholm. They do have walls, however, so I think we're going to try to take out Ourobro first. They only have 12 defense, and we're doing 30 damage with our archers, so we can take out Ourobro very quickly. I think even though this warrior is pretty low, it can still take out Ourobro. I don't want to do this. It did survive with one health, but as long as the city strength isn't too high, I think that's what usually happens. And Ourobro will belong to us in 18 turns, so we're not having any loyalty problems. Victor's upgrade is giving us 4 extra loyalty, and we're rising at 2.9 per turn. If we didn't have Victor's upgrade, we'd be losing loyalty, and it would eventually rebel. Don't say it. Oh, no. A joint formal war? Oh, no. <laughs> we're at war with everyone again. This brought back the nightmare of last game where I had a pretty good start. I was able to get a settler out really early and I was able to found a city on a really nice floodplains river. The river had already started flooding and buffing up some tiles and the sugar tile unimproved by turn 34 had six food, one production, which is 
pretty good. India declared a surprise war against me and marched on Moreau. India almost took out Moreau. They got it really low, but I was able to hold on. And I built some Batati archers and mounted a counterattack towards Delhi. I found out the Aztecs were also trying to siege it as well, but I was able to yoink it from them. China was not happy that we had a city so close to them on such a great river, and they declared war against us. The Aztecs declared war against us on the same exact turn, being upset that we yoinked Delhi from them. This was highly unfortunate, especially because the Aztecs have eagle warriors, an improved version of the warrior. Deciding to give up Nuri as most of our army was near Delhi, we were able to hold off the Aztecs for quite a while, and we eventually started to mount a pretty successful counterattack on the Chinese. Then on turn 55, India decided to try to retake Delhi and completely surrounded us with heavy chariots. We ended up losing Delhi and the game was pretty much over from there. I could have probably recovered, but at this point, I think I was getting out teched as well. And I just got done with the playthrough where I got out teched really hard because my early game wasn't the best. So I kind of knew where this was going and I decided to start a new game. As far as what to do with this settler, there's not a lot of places that we can settle in a new city. Over here near America is actually not that bad. There's a rice tile over here, there's a copper, and there's a jade. Although over here there's amber and there's two jade and a geothermal fissure, which if we do build a campus right here, we'll get two science from the geothermal fissure and one science from the mountain tile. We can actually build a campus here as well and there's three mountain tiles so it gives it three science. And we can now upgrade our government. It is pretty tempting to go for oligarchy for the extra 20% unit XP but their primary bonus only gives combat strength to melee units and we don't have really any melee units. I like autocracy because it has two red slots and we can keep the 50% extra production towards range units but we can also do conscription. Unit maintenance costs reduced by one gold per turn per unit which we were going to need to get soon anyways because we're currently losing 8.5 gold per turn. We have three cities now and hopefully we're about to have four so we're gonna go for urban planning plus one production in all cities and Teddy Roosevelt is the suzerain of Bologna so when he declared war against me so did Bologna. While we're taking out Sweden we're also moving half our archers towards America and I think we might just try to steamroll over Bologna and America at the same time. And it looks like Scythia is now helping out so we're gonna have to exterminate all of their warriors and I think we take out Stockholm this turn. Of course. Hey, Sweden will not stand the test of time. We got a boost towards recorded history. Build two campus districts. That's actually amazing because we were just teching that and we want to get that as soon as possible because we're going to try to build a great library. If we can build a great library, it will really help us not get out teched by the DD AI. And as we move towards Philadelphia, we have a pretty startling find. America has crossbowmen. That means we're going to have to pull everyone out for now. And we're just going to focus on getting Bologna. And America is moving their crossbowmen a little bit too close. We might be able to do some serious damage to him. And it looks like we caught him out of position. And I think we're going to appoint Pingala the librarian. And we're going to dump him in Moreau. He gives a 15% increase in science and culture, which isn't a whole lot right now. That's going to be about one once Moreau finishes their campus. But his other upgrades give a lot more science and culture as well. And we got our first expert marksman promotion. One additional attack per turn. So the archer is going to be tearing it up. And we can capture Bologna this turn. With no loyalty problems, it's going to belong to us in 13 turns. And they want to do a military emergency to stop me. This is is not going to do anything. Essentially, I lose two combat strength when fighting them, but it only lasts for 30 turns, and if they fail to retake Uppsala, which they totally will, it's in the middle of my territory, then I gain 200 diplomatic favor for free. You may notice that America did yoink Kerma from me. They sent a galley over here, and they two-shot the city because its combat strength was only like 10, but it's going to rebel in six turns, and after that, it will rebel back to us, and Philadelphia belongs to us. At your service. We got a boost from having a classical wonder, but we didn't get the great library boost, which actually now I think about it doesn't really matter as we've actually boosted everything in the ancient and classic era besides shipbuilding and we've almost researched all those texts and America has pikemen which actually isn't a huge deal we're about to have machinery and we're about to be able to upgrade our archers we just don't have enough gold to do it right now we might have to just pull back for now and give up Philadelphia at least until we can get a few crossbowmen on the field and we can pick up the great scientist Abu al Qasim al Zahiri he gives plus 20 healing for the players units within one tile so I think we may just send this great scientist into the combat zone and he can help us. 20 HP per turn seems pretty broken. And we can now promote Pingala. We're going to do Connoisseur. It gives plus one culture per turn for each citizen in the city. And he's in Moreau, which has nine population. So that's going to give us nine culture per turn. And the main reason why we wanted culture is so that we can get mercenaries faster. This gives us access to professional army, 50% gold and resource discounts on all unit upgrades. And now we can upgrade our Patati archers to crossbowmen for 85 gold. Before it would have been 170. And we're actually getting quite a good amount of gold income now because 
we build a bunch of commercial hubs. So eventually we'll be able to upgrade all of them and we can finally start bombarding Philadelphia again. This time we got a lot more firepower and it looks like Philadelphia is gone this turn. And since we sent Victor in there, we're gaining 2.4 loyalty per turn. So it's going to belong to us in 21 turns. Scythia decided they wanted to make peace and in a stroke of genius offered us 44 gold per turn for 30 turns, which made absolutely no sense because we were nowhere near Scythia at this point. In this situation, since I was growing so quickly, I would think the AI would be trying to stop me instead of fueling the fire by offering me insane amounts of gold. We steamrolled through the rest of America and with Scythia's great contribution, we were able to upgrade the rest of our crossbowmen into field cannons. At this point, we controlled most of the map and we were getting insane amounts of science and culture per turn. We had field cannons with upgrades. They had crossbowmen with no upgrades. There wasn't much contest there and we were able to steamroll through the rest of Scythia. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. If you did like the video, then drop a like. Judging by how many likes and views this gets, I may do another Civ video in the future. As this video goes up, I will be live streaming on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the Rainman. And today I'll be streaming a Pokemon style playthrough of the game Kenshi. Essentially all my main character who can't fight, but I can capture animals who can fight for me. If that interests you, then stop on by. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Though its face may change throughout the ages, history is written from the hand of the victor. By your actions this day, you ensure our people a glorious tomorrow.